Bordering the Arctic Circle, Iceland is home to some of the largest glaciers in Europe. But under the cold surface, the Earth is bursting with heat. Iceland is one of the most geothermally active places on our planet. Experts explore the area using a variety of methods to understand this form of energy. Gilvi Palhersia is a geophysicist from Iceland Geosurvey. He has studied geothermal fields all over the world. Geophysics is meant to X-ray the Earth to see, see what is going on at tens of kilometer steps. Anna Warimu Mwangi is part of the geophysics team from Kenya's power utility, yeah. Kengen. Yeah, so we go in this direction to the direction of the smoke. She is in Iceland to perfect her exploration skills by studying with seasoned experts like Gilvi in the geothermal training program of the United Nations University. When you're studying geology to me, it's like you're in an adventure and you want to unravel what was happening in the past. The history of how the earth was formed, it's great to know all of that. It's like you're going back in time and it's what is fascinating. Iceland's geology is truly unique. It sits on the border of two of the large tectonic plates that form the Earth's surface. These two plates shift apart by two centimeters per year. Over the millennia, this movement has created the geologically significant rift valley known as Thingvellir. The separation of the plates allows lava to move closer to the Earth's surface, creating numerous volcanoes and geothermal fields which heat up underground water and steam. The job of geophysicists like Gilvi and Anna is to identify and discover as much as possible about the geothermal fields and figure out the best places to drill holes to extract this energy. Iceland is harnessing its wealth of geothermal resources. Drill holes up to three kilometers deep tap into high temperature water and steam that shoots up towards the Earth's surface with high pressure. A system of pipes takes the mixture of water and steam to one of Iceland's five major geothermal power plants. The steam and water are separated, with steam used for electricity generation. An international group of geothermal practitioners is visiting one of the plants, as part of the UN University Geothermal Training Program. And then the steam is taken here to this uh, small units here. These are also the um, separators, separating the last remaining so droplets from the steam. After that, the, the steam is dry and can be used directly into the turbines. Iceland's geothermal plants generate between 60 and 303 megawatts of electricity each. Anna is part of this selected group of engineers and scientists from more than 50 developing countries. They have all come to learn from Iceland's experience in utilizing its geothermal energy. Around 26% of Iceland's electricity comes from geothermal energy. The plants also heat fresh water, which is transported to towns and cities in pipes, such as this one that runs for 27 kilometers from Nersia Vetler power plant to the capital, Reykjavik. The hot water is first stored in big tanks and then distributed throughout the city, where it is used in a variety of ways. Additional hot water is obtained from lower temperature drill holes under the city. Water, heated at 73 degrees Celsius, flows from the taps of houses in the city. Additional home hot water systems are then not needed. 
people are charged according to the amount of hot water they use. Hot water is also used to heat 90% of the houses in Iceland, not only in the harsh winters, but also in summer, which can still be chilly. Anna and the fellow classmates she shares the house with use electricity for cooking, lighting and powering appliances. However, the major users of Iceland's electricity are heavy industries, especially aluminium, which is produced in large-scale smelters like this one near the capital. Yet, in the town of Gvergerti, people are finding innovative and diverse ways to use geothermal energy. The town is full of greenhouses, most of them used to grow flowers. In this research greenhouse, vegetables are being grown. The greenhouses are kept warm by circulating hot water through pipes. And to deal with cloudy days and long winter nights, they are also experimenting with the use of LED lights. Several of the local small industries rely on the direct use of geothermal energy. And now, the town even has a geothermal restaurant. This is the earth cooking, geothermal cooking. This is 170 Celsius hot power and with 14 kilobars, so it's very easy to cook. And here we are doing uh, baking potatoes. Usually in the oven, you use a lot of heat and long time here, only 20 minutes. More or less, you can do all you want to do, you have to think how to do it and only can do it because this power is very nice and very cheap. Come from here, it's very easy, like an Arab with oil. Icelanders love hot pools, which are popular places of leisure. Most of the pools use geothermal water and some, like the Blue Lagoon, use geothermal water directly from a nearby power plant which is enriched with silica and believed to have health benefits. Compared to a number of other power sources, geothermal energy has minimal impact on the environment. Nonetheless, it does generate emissions. In the steam, you not only have water, but you also have uh, a gas. You have hydrogen sulfide, you have CO2 and hydrogen. Although there are ways to capture the hydrogen sulfide from the plant's emissions, these are costly. In the power plant, they will separate the gas from the water and then they release the, the gas into the atmosphere. And this is becoming a real problem because the hydrogen sulfide is really corrosive and, and probably unhealthy in, at least in higher doses. Anto Iverson works in a research station at one of Iceland's geothermal plants. He is developing an innovative biological solution to reduce emissions, where a special type of bacteria eats the hydrogen sulfide. They have decided that any future geothermal power plants, at least uh, near cities and towns, will have close to zero emission of hydrogen sulfide. Geothermal water used by households is also recycled. This water is collected in a pipe system and circulated throughout the city, where it is used to melt snow on roads and sidewalks, making it easier for Anna and her housemates to commute to the UN University Geothermal Training Program, a place for exchange of ideas and knowledge. Professionals attending the training center come from diverse countries around the world with great geothermal potential, like Costa Rica, El Salvador, Indonesia, Kenya and the Philippines. They are here to improve their skills and further develop the use of geothermal energy in their home countries. It's very important to expand the use of renewables and capacity building in the renewables energy technology is very necessary and especially in the developing countries because that is where most of the uh, increment in energy use will be. And it is a great blessing if we have the opportunity to assist countries, tens of millions of people, 
to harness the resources they have in the ground. Over 20 countries worldwide are generating electricity with geothermal energy and more than 70 are using geothermal water to heat houses for bathing and in industry. I think geothermal is the future. It is a resource that is renewable and it's a clean energy. We don't have to pollute. It is one of the ways of securing our energy for the future.